Yo, you down with AVV? Yeah, you know me. Check out this wine next on Leet Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Leet Wine TV. I'm Hello, everybody. Welcome to Leet Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show. All right, so to this wine for today, uh, we are going to review uh, the 2013 Alexander Valley Vineyards Cabernet Sauvignon, also known as AVV. I uh, bought this from Underground Cellar uh, for about 30 bucks. Uh, well, did I pay $30? I think it was valued at $30. I'd have to, I'll put in the lower third what I actually paid for it, whether I paid for 30 or what the value was. But I'm pretty sure it was valued at $30. I should have looked at my notes a little bit harder on that one. Um, so let's talk a little bit about this winery. They're, they're kind of a, they're kind of a, I just call my iconic winery, I guess. Um, so they were founded in, um, well, they weren't founded until 1975. But in 1961, Harry uh, Wetzel uh, visited the Sonoma area, and uh, he was at the time he was the chairman of the Garrett Corporation, and he uh, eventually purchased a plot of land in 1962, which was the historic Cyrus Alexander Homestead, where we get Alexander Valley from. Yeah, pretty sure about that one. Uh, after several years of building up the property and growing grapes. Uh, he eventually enrolls in UC Davis. Uh, his wife, Maggie, is also a co-founder, so we don't want to forget that. Um, so he enrolls in UC Davis, and uh, so he kind of learns about winemaking. And um, in 1975, they kind of decide we're going to create a winery. Um, skip a few years, like a couple decades. Uh, Phylloxera, you've heard me talk about Phylloxera in Europe, but Phylloxera actually hit California and um, it was pretty devastating. So the deal with that was phylloxera is a louse and it's uh, American rootstock or the American vines are actually resistant to phylloxera. It's not immune to it, just very resistant. Well, one of the rootstocks they were using uh, wasn't exactly the best rootstock to use for that resistance. And the Americans were kind of like, well, we're, we're protected, we're good. Well, unfortunately it was not the best rootstock. So it actually hit California. It wasn't as devastating as Europe, um, but it still affected some wineries or for some vineyards. So the, the bright side to that is that they allowed them to, after you know a couple decades of experimenting, they kind of had an idea exactly what would work and how to do everything. So they were able to kind of hit a reset button and just replant you know, the vineyards that were affected by phylloxera. And then over time, they can continue to, to um, uh, replant things. Uh, 19, 1995, they started the Cyrus uh, brand. Uh, 1997, they started building some underground caves, so that's really cool. <clears throat> In 1998, a gentleman by the name of Kevin Hall becomes a winemaker, and he still is the winemaker. 2008, uh, unfortunately, both Harry and Maggie, Maggie Wetzel passed away. Uh, 2011, they got a certified organic for, I guess, one of their small single vineyards, um, and they have a separate bottling for those I saw on the website. They do use a combination of French and American oak. Uh, barrels are used up to about four years or maybe four uses. They have a total of about 700 acres. Uh, they use drip irrigation. Uh, they have, in, their, in the area where they're at, uh, they have, it says anywhere from a 40 to 50 degree diurnal shift. That's, a, that's huge. That's like going from 90 to 40 in, in a day. But that helps retain acidity and you can really get some good, good fruit from that. They do sustainable practices overall. Um, and uh, if you go to the website, I'll have a link below to go there. It'll give more detail of these, but I'm just gonna give the highlights. They use cover crops, solar panels, they have green initiatives, um, health and wide riparian. That sounds like I did, I messed that up. Um, anyway, they, they do some, um, uh, they do some stuff with what's called the riparian, riparian 
uh, corridor, which is that's the interface between land and a river or stream, which I did not know what riparian or riparian is. Uh, they are also involved in historic preservation. Uh, they do gardens, all that. So just read all those uh, down below. This particular vintage, uh, the variety makeup is 94% Cabernet Sauvignon, 3% Merlot, Cabernet Franc is 1.5%, Malbec of 1%, and Petit Verdot 0.5. So a Bordeaux blend technically, but for all intents and purposes, it is a Cab Cabernet Sauvignon with some little, with some little like you know seasoning, if you will. All right, so um, you know, good red color. Uh, 2013, um, for Cab in the North Coast, so that's, you know, Sonoma and, and Napa combined, um, it's considered a extremely good vintage. So um, I'm excited to uh, see what this is going to come out to be. So, you know, definitely medium plus on the Air Max. I can really smell, you know, pretty far up. It has this, like, compote this um, raspberry, blackberry, um, really this juicy, almost jammy aroma. When you get farther into it, there's like a milk chocolate to it. My, my buddy Ian probably would love this wine. No, he he hates chocolate. He, has, he doesn't like chocolate in his wine. He actually doesn't really like sweets. But yeah, there's like a milk chocolate, um, almost like a milk dud, almost like caramel type of thing, um, aroma to it. Chocolate covered, you know, um, kind of chocolate covered cherry, honestly. Raspberry, blackberry. Yeah, there's a touch of uh, mint coming out too. So slight herbaceousness, but not like a not like a pyrazine, you know, bell pepper type of thing. Um, there's a touch of cedar box. That's probably what I'm associating the mint with, probably more the cedar box aspect. A little bit of cardamom, vanilla bean. So, I mean, the oak is coming through, but it's not overpowering on the, on the, on the, uh, on the nose. A little bit of licorice, anise, almost like, um, almost like a biscot, biscotti. Uh, you know, the cookies, what has that, the anise cookie. Let's taste this thing. So, right off the bat on, on, on the flavor, it kind of like, took all that and put it like in a blender. I mean, it just, it kind of like, felt like it flipped a whole bunch of stuff. And as soon as I start talking, the tannin was starting to really hit. So really tannic. There's like this spiciness on the, uh, on the palate. It's almost like, Okay, it's gonna sound really weird. I'm gonna quit. This is like, you know, when someone has like, it smells like grandma's attic or grandma's perfume or it smells like my childhood memory of something. So it is a somewhat of a childhood memory, but it smells kind of like the dentist office. And you might think that's an unpleasant smell. And I guess it could be, or I, because it's more of an aroma, but it's like the, it's like the taste, but I've always had good experiences at this particular dentist. It's not like every dentist's office, it's just like that particular dentist's office, like the old office. They just moved to a new thing, to a new office recently, and it didn't have the same aroma to it. So, but it's not on, it's not on, the, it's not on, the, uh, on, the, on the nose, it's only on the palate. Really what it is is more pine. It's kind of like a, a like pine, tree like piney so that's really what i was getting so it it, it just kind of reminded me of that so but it feels like the the palette is a little less fruit forward but it's super dark on the fruits it's like black cherry 
blackberry, black raspberry, a uh, touch of blueberry too. It's not as chocolatey on the palate as it is on the nose. There's definitely a bit of bramble to it, a little bit of um, like woodsiness to it. Uh, the cedar box is there. Uh, the vanilla is there. I don't really get the anise licorice type of thing, like the sweetness of that. Um, it's a really good wine, especially you know, for like thirty for a thirty dollar price point. That's this is, I think, pretty killer wine for thirty bucks. There's a bit of um. Somewhat herbaceousness too, a little bit of tarragon, that type of thing. But yeah, that's delicious wine. So um, if you if you find this wine out there for the 13, you probably should pick it up. Probably should pick up about any 13 that's that's a cab. But as far as Alexander Valley Vineyards or ABV, they're an excellent quality winery. I've never had a bad wine from them. I've you know I've had wines over the years on and off. And uh, they always are at least solid. They always deliver what they should deliver. And this one's delivering. I think it's kind of over-delivering a little bit. So, um, yeah, you should check it out. All right, that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, click all the links, friend me up, throw some money my way, if the PayPal link in the description, or go to the website and subscribe on YouTube. Tell your friends about it. Hit the, hit the little notification bell so you know when the new stuff comes out. It comes out every Monday and Thursday for the most part. Um, and uh, we'll see everyone again next time.